So I'm actually an engineer and a scientist from Purdue University, um, and I'm really here to talk to you about drugs, uh, specifically injectable drugs, not those kind of drugs, but drugs that help people, specifically ones that are given in injections. 16 billion of them around the world every year. Now, of those 16 billion injections, there's a huge problem in developing countries because 24 million people get an infection, either from hepatitis, AIDS, or another condition, because of unsafe needle use practices. Now, on top of that, the, the children that are not getting vaccinated, five million die from a preventable condition. And so, you know, what's, what's the disconnect here? Why, why are we not being more effective? You know, everyone seems to jump at the cold chain issue, and that's, that's a big problem, because, you know, vaccines, protein drugs, antibiotics, they have to go through this long, extensive shipping process to get where they need to go. They need to be refrigerated all the way there, and then once they get there, how do they get stored? Refrigerators, which are on solar power, gas power, um, if you're so lucky. And in most cases, they don't even have those. So think astronaut ice cream. NASA doesn't have refrigerators on the space shuttle, but they preserve all their food through freeze drying. And pharmaceutical companies do the same thing. There's 200 different lyophilized or freeze dried drug and vaccine formulations. Not all of those can be stored at room temperature without refrigeration, but the majority of them can. Compare the liquid format of, say, a protein drug. A couple of hours at room temperature is sufficient to start it to break down. But if you freeze dry that same drug, it could take a year or more before it breaks down at room temperature. So this seems like a fairly easy solution. Why don't they do this more? Well, it ties back to the extreme shortage of healthcare workers in developing countries, because this is how you have to administer those compounds. It's a syringe and a vial, which has to be manually mixed. Take the safety cap off. Then you have to inject it into this little container here and mix it all around and then give yourself an injection after you pull that solution up. Hold on one second. I really don't want to stick myself. Um, and you can see why this is such a problem because it's, it's very unsafe and it leads the healthcare worker to want to give multiple injections with the same needle, which really spreads disease, as I mentioned earlier. So what pharma companies and NGOs do is they shift to this pre-filled syringe format. The drug is already in the syringe, so you don't need to mix it. You take the cap off, you inject it, everything's good, right? Well, what happens there is the refrigeration problem. So there's really two problems, refrigeration and ease of use. Now, the third problem what happens after the fact? You know, you get this drug there, everything works great, they're vaccinated, now disposal is a huge issue. These end up in dumps next to villages, they get washed away into families' homes during floods, children play with them, and as a result, that's three problems. So what does LIOGO do? Well, from award-winning technology based out of Purdue University, we make it easier to deliver, use, and dispose of drugs in a developing country by turning this into that. This is our mixing and injection device. And all you have to do is pull the cap off, causing it to mix internally, and then compress, causing it to inject. All the benefits of a pre-filled syringe and all the benefits of a lyophilized or freeze-dried vial drug with the refrigeration. Very simple, very elegant. Now we have a whole platform of technologies based around the core concepts of mixing and injecting. And pharmaceutical companies are trying to partner with us to get these into the next phase of development, which is why we're trying to raise a Series A to do prototype production so that they can test it with their drugs in the field. So really what I'm asking for you is to look into your network and find people that can help us get that done. Help us to build relationships with the technical expertise to move forward and get this product and others like it on the front lines of global health. Thanks.